In the darkness, the booming noises grew louder, louder still, echoing everywhere all around. And now he was crouched in a dark hallway, crouched on a blue rug with a riot of twisting black shapes woven into its pile, listening to the booming noises approach. And now a shape turned the corner and began to come toward him, lurching, smelling of blood and doom. It had a mallet in one hand and it was swinging it, red rum, from side to side in vicious arcs, slamming it into the walls, cutting the silk wallpaper and knocking out ghostly bursts of plaster dust. Come on and take your medicine. Take it like a man. Is The Shining the finest writing Stephen King has ever done? One could easily make the case that it might be the scariest book he's ever written, rivaled, of course, by his haunting novel Pet Cemetery. Even King himself said once that, based on his fan mail, The Shining is ranked as the scariest amongst readers. King severed his heart open on this one and bled on the page. I think that's what makes The Shining so frightening. King is the type of writer that the writing community defines as a pantser. He doesn't spend time jotting down character notes or outlining the plot. As King himself described it, he writes the rough draft hot and the subsequent drafts cold. The rough draft is poured out on the page directly from his heart and gut, guided by intuition. In subsequent drafts, King switches to the thinking analytical mode deleting material, adjusting characterization, researching, clarifying thematic elements, and general polishing. But the rough draft, he's hot, and this often allows for a deeper intimacy with his work. Like the character Jack Torrance, King struggled with alcoholism. There were times he wrestled with resentment towards his family, even felt some violent impulses toward them. There were times he feared he wouldn't make good on his writing talent. The differences between King and Jack Torrance are many, of course. King suppressed his violent impulses, and he did make good on his writing talent. Fiction is prompted by the two magical words, what if, and The Shining feels like King used those words to explore what if he hadn't have succeeded with his writing talent. What if he didn't control his violent impulses towards his family? Horror author Richard Lehman once said that the horror writer is a worst-case scenario buff. This assertion is true when we consider the subject matter of The Shining. King examines in his novel one of the worst-case scenarios he can imagine. The disintegration of the family unit. Jack Torrance is an aspiring writer, father, husband recovering alcoholic, and a man who suffers with anger issues. His anger gets him in trouble. One time he accidentally broke his son Danny's arm while trying to pull him away from a mess the boy had made with his writing materials. Jack's anger even causes him to lose his teaching position after he retaliates against a student who punctured the tires on his VW bug. Jack's desperate out of a job, but he needs to take care of his family. His friend Al Shockley hooks him up with a winter caretaker job at the Overlook Hotel in the Colorado Rockies. Jack takes the job, hoping that he can reconnect with his family and rekindle motivation to finish a play script. Unknown to Jack or his wife Wendy, Danny possesses psychic abilities, such as reading minds and premonitions. On the first day at the hotel, Danny meets the hotel chef, Dick Holleran, who has the same abilities as Danny. Dick calls the ability Shining. Because of their shared ability, Danny and Dick develop a special connection. After all the staff and guests leave the hotel, the Torrance family settle into the Overlook. Danny continues to receive frightening visions, but he keeps his secret from his parents, not wanting to disappoint his father who sees the Overlook job as important to his family's future. 
The entities of the hotel struggle to possess Danny, so they begin to go to work on Jack, first by frustrating his abilities to work, and then by leading him to a scrapbook in the basement that provides a history of the hotel, much of it a dark and sinister history of mass murder. Jack develops cabin fever and becomes severely unstable. He destroys the CB handset and the snowmobile, trapping his family in the hotel as a blizzard increases outside. The hotel uses its haunting forces to push Jack into succumbing to his dark side, and in the latter half of the novel, we get a sinister illustration of what Red Rum means. Drunkenness and the influences of the hotel ghosts break Jack's will to resist his violent impulses. The hotel has created a monster, and that monster seeks to kill his family. Many of Stephen King's popular stylistic traits are exhibited in The Shining, and they are used most effectively. Foreshadowing is a technique common in most Stephen King novels. However, I think it's put to its best use in The Shining, contributing to the development of Danny's character through his visions. In the chapter titled Shadowland, Danny receives a premonition of a monstrous figure smashing walls with a roke mallet and sees a hand hanging over the edge of a bathtub, dripping blood. All these images shadowed in mystery, but enough to compel us to read on with deep investment. Foreshadowing via Danny's visions also adds to the doomful helplessness we feel for Danny's character, creating a claustrophobic horror a sense that terrible events coming are predestined, and there's no escaping them. Stream of consciousness style is also put to great use throughout the novel. Sometimes it shows up when Danny's reading other people's thoughts, and sometimes King allows us direct glimpses in the point of view character's head. My favorite instance of this occurs in Chapter 3, when Jack is introduced to the boiler in the basement, an object that plays a pivotal role in the story's climax. The words, you lost your temper, intrusively strike up in Jack's mind as Watson explains the boiler's function. We also get a vivid depiction of the moment when Jack did lose his temper, breaking Danny's arm, and we get a sense of the horror and remorse he feels as a result of the accident. This scene expresses a theme, I think. The painful parts of our past, and the thoughts and feelings evoked by it, are often the true ghosts haunting our lives impeding our development of becoming our better selves. The boiler serves as a metaphor for the increasing dark impulses within Jack. When Jack fails to suppress and control these bad impulses, he becomes monstrous and ultimately destroyed. When the boiler's increasing pressure is improperly released, it explodes and destroys the overlook. I feel these two elements mirror each other to some degree. The italicized stream of consciousness fragments also serve as a focusing device for the reader, creating a mesmerizing narrative rhythm, intruding between each paragraph to break the monotony. The novel does have minor flaws. At times, Danny seems a bit too mature in his thinking to be only five. Dick Holleran feels like a thin stereotype early on in the story, but he fills out nicely when the conflict really gets roaring and becomes a fully realized human being when we view the story through his point of view. The Shining displays King's most well-developed characters this early in his career, and some of the most suspenseful moments are when we spend time in their heads, entangled in their thoughts. We watch Jack begin a spiral into violent insanity. We see Wendy struggle to find the courage to take action when she is the only stable adult capable of protecting Danny. We see the moment Danny realizes it's too late. The monster has them in its grasp and there's no escape. It's the epilogue that resonates with me the most. When Dick Holleran gives words of comfort to a boy grieving the loss of his father, Danny and Wendy emerged from the darkness, changed in many ways, some parts of them broken and in the process of healing. They emerge from the darkness having learned an important lesson most great horror stories teach us. I'll let Dick Holleran explain it in his words. Quote, The world's a hard place, Danny. It don't care. It don't hate you and me, but it don't love us either. Terrible things happen in the world, and they are things no one can explain. 
Good people die in bad, painful ways and leave the folks that love them all alone. But see that you get on. That's your job in this hard world. To keep your love alive and see that you get on, no matter what. Pull your act together and just go on. End quote. The Shining reminds us that the world can be a dark place with a painful bite. But as Holleran's words of encouragement invoke, we can choose to be the light in the world, opposing the darkness. That concludes my review of Stephen King's The Shining. The monster has enjoyed a delectable meal. Five out of five for this one. This is Death Grand Reviews, the monster that devours horror, suspense, and all those things of the fantastic. See you soon.